Hi, my name is John Tormach or Tegmach. Pivot or persevere. Welcome to another episode. For the last uh, year or so, I've had a very serious case of Tormach envy. I've had a Teg CNC milling machine for about 12 years now and recently upgraded it to ball screws, which was a great improvement. But I've been really lusting after a Tormach, and I took down some notes to remind myself of why I was lusting after a Tormach. Um, but there's another thing that happened as well, which is a friend of mine started to put some doubts into my head about the Tormach, and I'll come back to that in just a minute. But basically he said that the well, I'll, I'll come to it right now. Basically, he said that <clears throat> there are some machines where backlash is pretty significant, like three to five thousandths. And that's far more than I could accept. So I was curious about that because I know that there are lots of people out there who have Tormox and they're very happy with them. So how could it be that Tormox had really bad backlash and yet people were happy to be with the machine? Uh, but that got me thinking about whether I really wanted to go that route or not because I get really good uh, low backlash and good quality with Marteg. The other thing is that for the type of work that I do, I'm doing micro machining almost all the time. So it's rare that I use an, an end mill larger than one eighth of an inch. In fact, a one quarter inch end mill is really large for me. I don't need to remove a lot of material, so I don't need a really uh, strong motor. Um, so do I really need a Tormach? But I really wanted one. So let's take a look at why. So the first thing that I really like about the Tormach that I don't have on my tag is computer-controlled spindle. Uh, there are two things you get with the Tormach, which is you can control the speed of the spindle as well as on and off. Uh, another thing is that uh, with the tag, I have to change the pulleys to change speeds. So there are, I think, uh, five different speed settings on the tag. It's not continuous. And it goes from 1,000 RPMs to 10,000 RPMs. I use 1,000 RPM when I'm using the edge finder. The rest of the time, I'm typically using 10,000 RPM because I'm mostly cutting aluminum or brass. Another thing that I've really wanted is more uh, room in the Y. The Y travel on the tag is five and a half inches, which is fine. But the problem that I have is the spindle is, is uh, not far enough away from the column. So what happens is, you know, the spindle is, say, only this far from the column. And then I have my uh, vise on the, the bed, and the vise hits the column before I run out of room. So I really want to move the spindle out. Now, I do have a kit that will move it out half an inch, which would make a big difference. Uh, another thing is I've really wanted a Heimer. Uh, I don't know if uh, you've seen the videos of it, but John Saunders at uh, NYC CNC has a lot of videos showing the Heimer to set the X, Y, and Z zero positions. And I just think that's really nice. I kind of like that over an edge finder. And then the final thing is uh, I've been lusting after the TTS, the Tormach tooling system, and the power draw bar for quickly changing tools. Uh, right now, sometimes I have to change the uh, the collet, and it's not really a collet. And uh, usually I just have to remove a set screw, and it's not really big, that big of a deal. Okay, so getting back to the Tormach, um, I decided to do more research into the reports that I'd seen about problems with the accuracy, or I should say the backlash, or lost motion of the machine. And uh, one of the things I did is I joined the Tormach group on Facebook so that I could do research. You have to join the group to be able to see all of the posts. I did some searches, and after looking at the searches, uh, the conclusion I came to is that uh, it seems like it's a fairly small percentage of the machines that are impacted by this issue. And for those machines, it seems like the issue is with a poor scraping job. One of the posts described it as chiseling rather than scraping. Uh, now, for those of you not familiar with scraping, uh, scraping is where you take what's close to a flat surface and you uh, scrape away just tiny bits of metal uh, shavings to slowly work the surface 
to something that's nearly flat. Uh, you want it to be really flat in terms of the measurements, but you also want to have you know, micro valleys uh, and micro mountains. I don't know what to call them. And the idea there is you have a combination of you know, sections that actually touch the, the other part and then sections that are a little bit lower so that you can have oil in there to provide lubrication between the two parts. Now, some of the machines were not well scraped at all, and that uh, resulted in uh, movement where there shouldn't have been movement because they didn't fit well enough together. So there was one person who paid a machine re rebuilder to have their machine scraped, and now they can hold less than half a thousandth of backlash, which is pretty good. Another person re-scraped it himself and has backlash of less than a thousandth. So the thing that I discovered is that with a Tormach, you can definitely get a machine that would meet all of the uh, qualifications that I have and it would have the accuracy. But there was a small chance that I could get one of the machines that had issues. Now, the same time that I joined the Tormach group on Facebook, uh, by the way, I'm new to Facebook. I haven't really used Facebook before, even though I've had an account for many years. I also joined a group for tag owners. And one of the things that I'll, I discovered, and I'll show you that in a little minute uh, on the computer, is there are a lot of uh, accessories. So there are a lot of modifications that you can make to the machine. So I've decided to go that route, which is to upgrade my tag, because I think that'll give me most, if not all, of what I want to have on my machine at probably at least $10,000 less than it would cost me to upgrade to a Tormach. I have uh, about uh, $3,000 into my tag now over the last 12 years, $2,000 to buy it originally, $1,000 to buy the ball screws. So the first thing, and I'll try to bring up a picture on the screen, is I decided to upgrade the, the spindle motor. The spindle motor that comes with the tag is a quarter horsepower motor, and it doesn't have variable speed control. It's either on or off. Now, it turns out that there are motors designed for sewing machines that are controllable. So you can control the speed, turn them on and off. And they're also, I believe, three quarters horsepower instead of a quarter horsepower. So they're stronger motors and they are also completely controllable. So I decided to order one of those. Uh, and I also need to order pulleys and some belts to go along with it. Um, I should have all of that pretty soon, and the total cost of that is $150. So the first step that I'm going to take, oh, and by the way, I decided to call this process of upgrading my machine a tag mock, uh, which means I'm going to take my tag and give me a lot of what I wanted with a tour mock. So the first step in my tag mock journey is to upgrade the spindle motor to a better motor. The next step that I'll take is to take the uh, spindle motor and make it controllable by Mach 3 so that I can set both the speed of the spindle and turn it on and off. And that'll be really nice to have because when I have a long job where I'm using a uh, 20 thousandths or 10 thousandths diameter cutter, that's a 10 thousandths of an inch, it might run for several hours, and this way it'll turn the spindle off when it's finished. Once I've done that, I also found about another upgrade, which is to upgrade the frame. The frame on the Tormach is it's pretty good, but there's another frame someone has designed which is a lot beefier. Not only is it beefier, but it also provides more Z movement as well as more clearance in, in the Y, which is what I really want. And I'm not sure exactly how much more clearance I'll have to measure it, but it's at least several inches. So that should allow me to use the full five and a half inches of travel in the Y, which will be really, really nice. And in terms of the Z travel, it will be, give me enough room so that I probably could use a Heimer. Now, the thing about a Heimer that I don't have leads me to the next upgrade, which is something that isn't available yet, but is currently being worked on. And that is a brand new spindle for the TAG that takes the Tormach tooling system, or TTS. So you'll be able to, I'll be able to buy Tormac TTS holders, including a Heimer that is in a TTS holder, and use it in there. They're also, the same people who are doing this are also working on a power draw bar that goes along with this new spindle. 
Now I have no idea how much this combination is going to be for the new spindle and power draw bar. I'm guessing it's going to be maybe $1,000, but I don't really know. The upgraded frame is $500. So if you take the, the spindle, $150 plus the upgraded frame, $500, that's now $650 more. So I'm up to $3,650 for the total <coughs> investment. If I get the, then get the new spindle and the power draw buyer, I'll still be less than $5,000 total investment. I'm also going to build a new enclosure because once I get the new frame, uh, it won't be uh, the old frame, the, the old enclosure will be too small because I'm going to have more distance in the Y, so I'll need more room in the frame. Uh, I'm, I'm in the enclosure. So this is a summary of the journey that I'm planning to take, taking my tag and moving toward what I call the tag mock. I'm going to produce a video, one video for each of the upgrades. The next video will be upgrading the spindle motor, and that's going to be unboxing the spindle motor, uh, I'm going to have uh, pulleys. One of the pulleys has a bore that is the wrong size, it, uh, so I'll need to, to to mill it out to make it the right size for the, the bore on the, the motor. And then I also have to make a mounting plate, um, and someone has already designed the mounting plate, so I just need to mill it. So I'll do all of that milling on my tag before I disassemble it and put the new motor on. So. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you're going to enjoy the journey and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.